sci-fi movie. For the kids suffering from post-concussion syndrome in these tubes, it's what their parents believe will set them apart from years of recovery or being able to get back on the ice and scoring goals in months. During hyperbaric oxygen therapy, also known as HBOT, the patient is placed in a chamber where the atmospheric pressure is increased and 100% pure oxygen is delivered. The therapy dissolves oxygen directly into the plasma, brain, and cerebral spinal fluids. Believers of the therapy suggest it heals the brain and open wounds quicker. Well, ultimately, because you're increasing the level of oxygen that's able to diffuse into cells, you're potentially increasing a person's energy level. You will be, um, any cell that gets more oxygen is just going to function better. Long term, by going through more treatments, if there is any injury, presuming there's injury in the brain itself, we want new blood vessel growth happening so it's going to reach out beyond the area where it might have been cut off. And that's again one of the big um, outcomes behind hyperbaric oxygen therapy is to get that new blood vessel growth happening where it's going to go to places where it's potentially been cut off by the injury. HBOT isn't a new way of treating ailments, but this controversial alternative medicine is now being used to treat sports-related concussions. And the first clinic of its type opened in Toronto in March. We treat primarily post-concussion syndrome. Um, and who, who are your patients? Our patients oh, for the concussion center are primarily people who have suffered a concussion or multiple concussions and are not um, recovering from the concussions. And that can go from, you know, athletes. Oh, yeah, it can be it can be children, it can be business people, it can be athletes, it can be anybody who's had a concussion. But Fail warns hyperbaric oxygen isn't a quick fix. There are dietary changes that the patient must make, including taking supplements, in order for the therapy to work. Patients have to understand that this isn't magic. It doesn't happen fast. This is actually, we're endeavoring to heal a body. We're not trying to mask a symptom. So what it is, is because this is a pay-for-service center, um, I want to make sure that every patient is very, very well qualified, that they understand what the procedure is, uh, how long it is going to take. I want their expectations to be realistic. And this is not a standalone modality. This is not something that you just come in and it's just hyperbarics. It is basically lifestyle changes, meaning with regards to concussion. Uh, you should really go home, remove yourself from your electronics, from your television, from your PlayStation, from your telephone. Um, just relax the brain. Don't try to uptake a whole lot of memory work for your acting classes or anything like that. Uh, diet modification to uptake the foods that are essential for brain health. Um, and as Dr. Clack indicated, um, there are some different supplements depending on exactly how the patient is presenting for care. And that is... I really am stuck on, let's just say, or I really do want the patients to understand that this is, you know, it doesn't happen overnight and there are other things that decide whether or not you will really get good recovery. The price isn't cheap. It's $180 for a one-hour session. The U.S. military is using hyperbaric treatments on its soldiers to help combat the brain-damaging effects of BLASP suffered in Iraq and Afghanistan. A study released in January this year found even after three years the soldiers sustained brain injury, one month of HBOT helped with short-term memory problems, stopped headaches, and swept away depression. Doctors in Toronto's medical circles remain skeptical, saying there isn't enough evidence to support whether HBOT works on concussions. But Dr. Clack believes word of mouth and positive results from patients will gain momentum and hyperbaric oxygen therapy may become mainstream in the next decade. And right now, while hyperbaric, is, hyperbaric oxygen therapy is only recognized for 13 conditions, as people push that envelope and try it for new things, and that's exactly how medicine is practiced. You just get a hold of something, you think, okay, this might have an application, so we'll try it. So give it another 10 years, and yes, we'll probably have a whole bunch of new approved conditions that doctors will maybe not be directly involved with themselves but they'll say to a patient you should consider this for 
your problem. After the patient changes into scrubs, they're now ready for a session in the hyperbaric chamber. So they slide in, and as soon as the door closes, they're ready for a dive. It's like pressure of 16 and a half feet below sea level. I think it's time for a nap for the Toronto Sun. I'm Jenny Ewan.